Finally tonight, two veteran senators, Maine Republican Olympia Snow and New Mexico Democrat Jeff Bingaman, are retiring. Both have expressed concern that the political middle ground is disappearing in Washington. Gwen Eiffel sat down with them earlier today. Senator Snow, Senator Bingaman, thank you so much for joining us. You have both worked together on issues ranging from energy to health care. Would you say, Senator Snow, that you represent the sensible center? I do. I mean, it's the willingness to work or come to the middle to sort through the issues and try to reach a resolution, recognizing that the issue you're working on is important, and the question is, how do you get there from here? And try to sort through the issues, and that's critically important. And having the impetus to do it, not just to be predisposed to one position and that's it. Senator Bingham, you voted more party line than Senator Snow has over the years, and yet you are still defined also as a moderate in this setting. How would you define that? Uh, the only way that happens in this Senate, in this Congress, and really most of the Congresses that I've served in, is if you have bipartisan support. You, we just, we've always been, I think when I came to the Senate, the Republicans were in charge of the Senate, then the Democrats took charge, and the Republicans took charge, and the Democrats, and back and forth. Uh, I think it's gone back and forth about six, six or seven times in the 30 years I've been here. So you have to have bipartisan support to get anything done, particularly with the Senate rules. Except that now, more than ever, it seems as if the Senate in particular and the House as well are moving away from that idea of bipartisan agreement and support, and that anyone who veers from the party line is considered to be unreliable. Well, what's happened is, is that each side puts up their party positions. And that's the point that I've been making, is that you have to get beyond that. Once they don't prevail, are you then willing to work out a resolution to the key question that's before the Senate? And that's what it's all about. And the Senate really was designed as an institution for consensus building, working on issues and trying to resolve those differences. But they become irreconcilable uh, because once the party positions don't prevail, then there's no impetus to move forward to try to reach a different result. And you think things are irreconcilable now? I don't. I think it's all a matter of changing human behavior. You know, and I think that's, that's the bottom line. People have to step back and think, what is the purpose of the United States Senate? What is the objective of serving in public office? I happen to believe it's problem solving, that I've come here to solve problems. That's why I've been in public office for virtually 40 years. And because I believe that we have an obligation, responsibility to address the issues uh, that come before you state or for your country. Senator Bingaman, does it seem to you like things are stuck? Well, I think what's happened is that the whole country's become much more polarized politically. And uh, you have uh, uh, the media's polarized. Uh, I mean, you, you have, if, if you are of one point of view, you know which channel to watch, and if you're of another point of view, you have a different channel you want to watch. Um, and I think that that is being reflected in the Congress, and the Congress is more polarized, and, uh, and you have a lot of people running for office on a platform that they will not compromise once they get to Washington. They will stick to their guns, and, uh, and of course our system of government was designed so that you got to compromise or you can't. Is it that people won't compromise because they can't or won't compromise, or because politically they can't afford to compromise? Well, it's an interesting question because what Jeff mentions is true. Uh, what's happening in the Congress is reflective of the country as a whole. I mean, we now look at states, are they red or blue or purple or whatever, which I think is unfortunate because we don't look at the, the country as a whole in its entirety. Uh, and people say to me, well, you know, why won't you work together for the common good of the country? Now, the whole issue, unfortunately, with compromise is that uh, people, you know, view it with disdain. Somehow that it's viewed as a capitulation of your principles. It is not. Now, you're both leaving. If you, you could be free to say whatever you want here. <laughs> what would you do to make it work if you could? Well, I think uh, there's no single uh, fix to the problem. Uh, our, our problem right now is you've got, you know, you've got what, a 90 some odd percent of, of the folks on the Republican side have signed a pledge that they're never going to raise revenue or raise taxes. Uh, that makes it very difficult to get uh, agreement on a, 
approach to uh, reining in the deficit uh, when, you, when you add in the, the Democratic demands. And the Democrats, uh, there are folks on the Democratic side who, who absolutely will not discuss any changes in, in entitlement programs. Uh, and that makes it difficult, too. So uh, you, we got to find a way that uh, we can bridge those gaps and people can recognize that some compromise is required. Senator Snow, I hereby grant you a magic wand. What's the fix? Well, we could return to transparency and accountability would really, I think, build confidence in the integrity of the outcome of the legislative solution. But we don't have that anymore. It's a closed door. It either comes to the floor without going through a committee. It's crafted behind closed doors. We have up and down votes. I mean, it's sort of similar to the House. I feel like I'm back into the House of Representatives. We have up and down votes. Have an open amendment process. Have people air their views. And sometimes, you know, when you have that opportunity, you might not agree on everything in the package, which you might not because if it's a big package. But at the end of the day, so you know, I made my voice heard on behalf of my constituents. And the ultimate result is something that I now can support, even if it's not everything that I wanted. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you don't agree on a lot of fundamental issues, foundational, as, as some people would say, issues, because of your party affiliation. Yet, in your departure, in your leaving this institution, do you make the center a little bit more soft? Does the center go away even more with your departure? Well, it depends on who replaces this. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I tend to think that. Uh, I can't speak for Olympia's uh, circumstance in Maine, but in New Mexico, I hope we elect someone who is uh, moderate and willing to work uh, uh, for the best uh, interests of the country. I hope we can do that. Uh, so, uh, and I assume that uh, she has the same hopes uh, for her state. That's true. And it, as you know, I made a statement as to my concerns about what is transpiring in the Senate in terms of the dysfunction and how important it is. Um, but and when that's you leave, something. Yes. Doesn't the dysfunction have a chance to take greater hold with your, in your with your absence? Well, you know that my concern is that it's not going to change on the short term, and that's what I had to consider at, at where I am in my own life and adding six years as to whether or not it's going to change. I'm going to speak on those questions on on the outside, but I am concerned uh, that the lines have drawn. I mean, the analysis that have been done recently about, you know, ratings of, very, of all of us as senators, you know, whether conservative or liberal and so on. Back in 1982, there were 58 senators that came between the most conservative Democrat and the most liberal Republican, and today there are none. So there's not much of a center. And we have to decide that the institution has to, you know, not only solve problems, but the American people have to give rewards to those people and individuals who are willing to work across party lines. There are no political rewards for that today. If you have to give a piece of advice to your successor about how to get the Senate back to the middle, to talking, to agreement, to compromise, what would that advice be? Well, my advice would just be to reach out to, to people of the other party and try to get, uh, uh, I think Olympia's right, that uh, you don't get any uh, credit, particularly with voters uh, in your state, particularly in the primary process, uh, for reaching out to the other party. And in fact, it's a real liability uh, in some cases to, to do that. But I think it's important that senators uh, run on a platform that they're going to come and, and work on s solving problems and not that they're going to come and dig their heels in and refuse to compromise. Senator Snow. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I mean, and certainly the advice I would give to uh, my successor or to anybody who serves in elective office at any level and certainly in the United States Senate, which is an institution that was designed by our founding fathers to, to build those bridges. I mean, I would certainly recommend being open and listening and talking to people with whom you disagree, not to just the people with whom you agree. Because at the end of the day, you can't solve a problem if you're not talking to people that disagree with you. And I say that to, you know, my own constituents. And I think what's the frustration that exists across this country is, you know, a legitimate one from the standpoint, whether it's Occupy Wall Street or Tea Party, is that we have failed to address the key questions at this consequential moment in, in the life of America. And I think that's the manifestation of all that frustration, anxiety, and anger, and antipathy uh, towards Washington and Congress. Are you optimistic? I just hope that in the aftermath of this election, 
uh, that people will come together and, and be determined to focus on those issues and make a material difference because the American people are fearful. You know, I've traveled the country and I've, I've heard, you know, and certainly in my state, they're fearful. They're more worried about the inability of the elected officials in Washington to get together and to collaborate. Uh, they can't understand it. And America has always been a country that can deal with big problems. I mean, that's really the essence of our greatness. Retiring Senator Jeff Bingham of New Mexico. Thank you very much for joining us. And Senator Olympia Snow, retiring of Maine, Republican. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn.